Hello. Hey, Grace. How's it going? How y'all doing today? Uh, this is going to be a really fun Sunday of baseball. Uh, we don't have basketball until Thursday. So uh, we really don't have a lot to worry about. I'm going to spend some time on baseball today. You know, I'll go, I'll go over everything. I want to do my full analysis here, and then I'll answer questions, or I'll answer questions interspersed with everything else like I normally do. Um, uh, and that's basically it. I don't really have much of an introduction. Uh, let's get into it. So um, actually, you know what? Let me, let me preface everything. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, James. That's funny. I have one of those every day. I always try to do the crazy weird thumbs up. Um, so today uh, we have something really, really unique, right? Um, every once in a while, and most of the time it's in Coors Field, sometimes it's in Texas, but every once in a while you'll, you'll see a, a, a team total go over six runs. And when that happens, that's like, uh, you know, do what you can to get some bats from that lineup. Six runs is a phenomenal, phenomenal total. And today we have the Minnesota Twins, who as of uh, last check are at six and a half runs today. Well, between 6.4 and 6.5, but I have them at 6.5 runs because I round up. Uh, six and a half runs is absolutely insane. It's ab just out of this world phenomenal. Uh, you really don't get six. Like I said, over six is special. Six and a half is really, really something else. And then you scroll down a little bit. And unfortunately, this isn't relevant for FanDuel. And you see the Colorado Rockies, who have a, a total today of 7.8 runs. I'm going to repeat that again in case you think I messed it up. The Rockies' projected total in Vegas is 7.8 runs. That tells me that even if the Rockies are chalk, they are not going to be owned enough. And what my overall strategy today is going to be is to find the five Rockies that I want to fit in. Uh, obviously, this isn't relevant on FanDuel, but find the five Rockies that I want to fit in, find some value pitching, and then, you know, find some other bats. Hopefully some twins, but we'll see uh, if we have enough money to get those in because that's going to be really, really important. Um, so the reason... Um, I like to do this at 11 o'clock on a Sunday or like a four o'clock on a Thursday when I can is because I get to talk about the actual lineups that have come out instead of talking about what I think, uh, you know, is going to happen in terms of how the lineups play out. Uh, but now we actually have, you know, verified information. So let us start by talking about the games in chronological order as I have them. Uh, number one is the Padres and the Blue Jays. Uh, unfortunately, for this one, we don't have any confirmed lineups yet. Uh, so I will duck back to this later, and I will sum it up pretty quickly. Chris Paddock is a fantastic play at 10-4. Absolutely love him. Not going to be able to afford him today, let's be frank. I want those Rocky Bats at any and all costs, and getting Chris Paddock at 10-4 would mean like I would have to play David Hess as one of my other pitchers, and I'm just not going to wind up doing that. Uh, so again, I like Chris Paddock. He's good upside, but at 10-4, I'll find other pitchers with similar upside for like 2,000 less. And we'll see a few of those coming up. Uh, on the Blue Jays side, Stroman is a ground ball pitcher that doesn't strike people out a lot. Uh, on FanDuel, without the Rockies bats there, I would not play Stroman. Uh, I know he is uh, cheap enough, but I would rather spend up for like Caleb Smith or Zach Wheeler. Uh, someone with actual upside today uh, against a, a worse lineup than Stroman. Uh, excuse me. Uh, but on DraftKings at 7,400, I think he's safe enough. And while I don't expect more than, you know, a seven strikeout per nine performance from him, uh, if he's on, he keeps the ball on the ground enough that, uh, you know, a 15, 16 DKP performance from, uh, you know, a 7,400 dude isn't going to kill you. 
especially if you are able to fit in those Rocky spats. So on DK, don't mind Stroman. Uh, he's definitely in the pool of the cheap pitchers that I'm going to be looking at so that I can get those Rockies in. Game two is the Tigers and the Mets. Uh, here we can dig in a little more because we have both lineups verified. Uh, we have Zach Wheeler and, uh, and Spencer Turnbull. Uh, Zach Wheeler is about the upper edge of what I think we can pay today and still get those Rockies in. He's someone who's shown you uh, 10, <clears throat> 10 plus K upside. Uh, he's going against a poor lineup that is missing a couple of the hottest bats that they have going. Uh, you know, Miggy Cabrera, who's been doing really well, uh, is out. Grainer, who isn't good by any means, uh, but Hicks has uh, like an OPS of zero over the last couple of weeks. So that is a significant downgrade. And Dixon as well, <clears throat> who's playing instead of Miggy Cabrera, uh, you know, he has been absolutely, absolutely stone cold with an OPS under 100. Uh, and then Dewell Lugo, who you might think has been doing better, is not doing as well as you would think. He had four hits the other day, but all of them were like weak singles. So if that's what you're going to get from him, you know, good good luck trying to repeat that. Uh, but, on you know, I think it's more important that we understand that even though he's hitting second, uh, he's not going to be a good play because he doesn't have the power, the extra base uh, opportunities. He's not going to steal anything, even against Wheeler. Uh, so basically here, even though Wheeler hasn't been uh, in fantastic form lately, um, I am uh, going to be a bigger fan of taking Wheeler uh, at the at the price that he's at. You know, the 8,600, uh, you know, he's about a thousand more than that on FanDuel. Uh, and he does have that strikeout upside against a Tigers offense that is the worst in the American League. Granted, you know, they are better than several teams in the National League. Uh, but they are losing the DH. They do have, uh, you know, three backups that are, are are in the lineup today that are worse uh, than the actual hitters. So all of those are, are boosts uh, for Wheeler. So again, while I might go cheaper, he's the, the upper limit of where I think we can go. Uh, Spencer Turnbull uh, is, is more interesting. I had Spencer Turn Turnbull as a possibility. He's a decent pitcher with decent K upside. We've seen him strike out, uh, you know, uh, more than nine per nine in a few games this year. And I wouldn't be too shocked if he did it against a Mets team that's kind of been flailing. Uh, the one thing is, uh, oh yeah, Wheeler is... Any any Mets starter this year, as James points out, honestly, any Mets starter is going to come with risk. Uh, the way DeGrom and Syndergaard have been pitching comes with risk. But 8,600 for the upside, uh, and he's going to have a lot less risk than some of the other pitchers that I'm going to be talking about that are cheaper than him. Uh, because, again, I don't think we're going to want to spend up for pitchers when we have a 7.8 run total from the Rockies. That, I mean... I, I, someone asked me on Flick before uh, who I think the best pitcher is or the best chance of getting 40 DKP from a pitcher. And I said, honestly, I think that Arenado has a better chance of getting 40 DKP today than any pitcher. Slight exaggeration, obviously, but truth be told, you know, it's not too crazy for any one of those Rockies batters, uh, possibly two of the Rockies batters uh, to get 40 DKP. So, uh, you know, I, again, 7.8 total, and I believe the wind is blowing out at 20 miles an hour, if I'm correct. No, it's at 10 miles an hour. Uh, yeah, well, I pointed that out before. If you're doing, uh, I've talked about how FanDuel is going to be different today, and I'm going to get to that because there is one team uh, far and away, but I, I've already said how we can play Stroman on DraftKings, but not on FanDuel because we don't need that value on FanDuel. You understand we can pay up for a pitcher. I'd rather have a Caleb Smith on FanDuel uh, who's underpriced and under 10K and then get, you know, a twin stack in there. But I'll get to that later. Uh, you know, the Coors Bats is me talking about DraftKings because that's my main site and I think they're the best when it comes to baseball. Uh, but we can have that discussion any other time. Uh, next up... Uh, Oh, as I was talking about, Spencer Turnbull, excuse me. Uh, Spencer Turnbull is someone who's shown upside. Uh, there's a few really hot Mets right now, uh, Wilson Ramos specifically. Um, I, I wouldn't mind spending you know, the 4,100 on Ramos, if you can afford it, I think that you won't be able to again, because we're going to need to find a uh, value in other places 
Uh, but, you know, Ramos is pulling the ball. He had over 30 DKP yesterday, and then they pulled him. Uh, and the backup catcher, Thomas Nito, wound up getting a home run. Uh, so, you know, he could have had even more than that. Yeah, I think Coors is going to be uh, – it, it's it was supposed to be windy today, but now it looks like it's going to be eight to ten mile an hour blowing out, which is fine. But it, it definitely isn't uh, the boost that I thought it was going to be uh, from the weather forecast I saw last night uh, for Coors Field, which was a significant wind. But you know what? Honestly, that might have been you know affected by a, a storm that they had rolling through the area. I have I, honestly I have no idea. Uh, but that significantly you know it's half of what I expected it to be. Regardless, seven point eight against Baltimore, against the worst pitcher. No, I appreciate it, Weenick. I definitely, definitely appreciate it. Uh, I want any and all information. And, you know, that's what I'm saying. I, I had a bad forecast yesterday when I looked at it because what you're saying is backed up by what it currently is saying uh, from the numbers. And I would definitely believe you more than that. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, Wilson Ramos is a good play. I think Conforto coming back is going to be under-owned. Dom Smith is a really good hitter, mostly for contact. I think the Mets are really trying to get him showcased so that they can trade him because they don't really need him with Pete Alonso. Uh, what do you mean Paddock is out? Paddock, ooh, did they really bump Paddock? That would change. Oh, yeah, Robbie Erlin. It looks like Robbie Erlin is starting instead. Ooh, that's a huge blow to the Padres, and that might get you... So basically when something like this happens, uh, let me just talk about this holistically because this is something that's going to happen from time to time. Uh, maybe he has the flu like David Price and they weren't going to throw him for 0 0.2 innings. Uh, when something like this happens, when you have an ace that gets bumped, look at the pricing of the other team. In this case, we have a Blue Jays team where everyone is under 4,000. Uh, what you have seen is uh, on DraftKings, and I assume on FanDuel as well, when you are going against an ace pitcher, the opposing team gets priced down. So what you have is Blue Jays who are being priced for going against Chris Paddock, even though now they're going against Robbie Erlin, who is a lefty that they should be able to absolutely smash. Uh, so, you know, I'm not 100% sure what the Blue Jays lineup is going to wind up being. Uh, I will get back to that later. Like I said, I'd rather talk about the lineups that have come out at this point uh, because that's significantly more important. I can give you actionable information. Uh, but, you know, what we can talk about now is that the Padres are starting Robbie Erlin, who is a poor lefty, uh, who's going to probably get absolutely shellacked today by a completely underpriced Blue Jays team. Uh, and right now, the Padres lineup with Garcia, Naylor, Machado, Hosmer, Renfro, Myers, France, Austin Allen, and Margot batting ninth is one that again, especially on FanDuel, I'm not really interested in playing Strowman. I think that on uh, on DK, you can get away with it. I think there are going to be some other options similarly priced that are going to be better with higher K upside. I don't like Strowman against that many lefties. Uh, but you know, again, 7,400 with with that mediocre upside is okay. Uh, but he's a lot more likely to get a win now with Robbie Erlin pitching for the Padres. I'll tell you that much. So that that's interesting. Thank you, Darko. I really appreciate that. That just updated while you said it. I can't believe that. That is That really does change everything. That makes the Blue Jays a fantastic value stack today. Fantastic. Or as I had no consideration for them before. You know, there are some really, really hot bats uh, in this lineup. And they're going to go under-owned at under 4,000 per person. Yeah, Lourdes Goriel has been on fire if he plays. Oh, give me Vladdy Guerrero at 3,800. Lourdes Goriel, dual position eligibility at 3,300. And he's a good guy against lefties. That is going to be really, really interesting. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll get to that when the Blue Jays post their lineup. Uh, well, thank you, Darko. I appreciate it. So like I said, um, this actually does help in, in some way. Uh, because first of all, if you're on FanDuel, it gives you some cheap bats that you can fit in one of the better pitchers if you want to get in an ace. Uh, but on DraftKings, it gives you a few options uh, that are in better spots and are going to be a lot cheaper. So you can play five of those Colorado bats and have some cheaper other options uh, to fill in. While I don't normally love them, Danny Jansen at 2300 looks a lot better now than he did five minutes ago. 
Uh, you know, I'm not expecting him to get a home run, but his odds of getting a home run against Robbie Erlin are significantly better uh, than they were against Chris Paddock. Let me tell you that. And 2,300 is going to save you a hell of a lot to get those course field bats and some boosts to the pitcher that you're going to want. So that's good. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's sum up what I've said so far in terms of pitching Erlin terrible. Don't play him 8,200. That's ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Stroman, not really interested on FanDuel at all. I'd rather have Caleb Smith uh, as the one pitcher on FanDuel a, a far and away. Uh, and the Blue Jays bats are going to be underrated for them going against Robbie Erlin. And then Spencer Turnbull uh, is an interesting GPP type play. The Mets strike out a lot. The bottom of that lineup is absolutely terrible. I do not trust Frazier Gomez, Echeverria, or Ligaris. Uh, so I would take Turnbull uh, and his high case strikeout upside over them. Plus, you know, as a Mets fan, you've seen over the course of the last forever uh, that if they're going against a pitcher that they haven't seen before, for some reason, they're really terrible. They just don't have the advanced scouting on them that I would normally expect. So what we see is, uh, you know, rookie pitchers and first time pitchers seeing the Mets, uh, you know, have a little bit of a boost. And as I've explained before, and you saw in the article I posted a couple days ago, uh, there is something about City Field that uh, hampers production the same way that uh, Coors Field boosts it. Uh, very, very similar. The article I posted was fantastic, a deep analysis from Fangraphs. Uh, and I'll post it again from time to time if you missed it. Uh, but any pitcher pitching in City Field does get a boost. Not, you know, a huge boost the way uh, the bats in, in course Field get a boost. But it is worth noting uh, that the exit velo in City Field is the lowest in the major leagues by far and has been for a decade. Uh, and it is not a fluke uh, given the sample size. Uh, and they compared it to the Mets away. It's just everything uh, says that there's something weird going on there that they need to figure out. But it means that the pitchers there are boosted, which means Turnbull at 6,900 and Wheeler. Again, the upper tier of where I'm going to pay uh, because I want those course Field bats at 8,600. So let's move on next to the Rays and the Indians. Uh, this is another one. We got both confirmed lineups, so we can talk about this. Uh, there is nothing crazy going on with the Rays, except Eric Kratz uh, is catching instead of Darno, but that's kind of a wash. Neither of them can really hit. Uh, the Indians are playing their, uh, the, the Indians are playing an interesting lineup, right? And I'm kind of confused as to what the point is of this. They're going Lindor, Mercado, Santana, Kipnis, Ramirez, Mike Freeman, Jordan Luplo, then Lennis Martin and Kevin Ploiecki. Uh, so unfortunately, we don't get a Darno versus Ploiecki matchup, which I would have loved to have seen uh, as a Mets fan. Uh, but this is not as good a lineup as I would have thought. And if you look at uh, what Tampa Bay is planning today, they have Ryan Stanek as the opener. At 6,400, obviously, you can't play him. Uh, but Beeks, Jalen Beeks, is supposed to come in after him. Jalen Beeks, who's been pitching very well lately, has a high K upside and is better against lefties. Uh, so they're going to have Kipnis, Freeman, and Martin, who are going to be much worse when they could have had other options coming off the bench. Uh, so at with Beeks's price at, where was he? Give me a second here. Oh, I have to reload that. Sorry. I have that all set up too. I just have it set up on the laptop. Jalen Beeks today is 7,600. Uh, I really do like him today. Uh, what, what, We've seen him, uh, you know, get hit hard by the Dodgers, but it's the Dodgers. Uh, and then we saw him only get three innings uh, against Miami. But the reason he only got three innings against Miami is because uh, as soon as the pitcher spot came around, they pinch hit for him. He was pitching fantastically, and he would have been able to go uh, significantly more innings. We've seen him a couple of times, uh, both against Kansas City, but regardless, uh, get the 25 DKP upside that we want for someone in the 76 uh, range, especially against you know, a Cleveland offense that let's face it, isn't that great. The weather conditions aren't going to be that great. Uh, the wind is going to be blowing in not significantly, but almost 10 miles an hour. Uh, so Jalen Beeks at that price is going to be one of the better plays. I think today, uh, I have absolutely no problem getting him in there. Uh, especially again, to get the cores bats in Trevor Bauer, uh, on the other hand is worth talking about more specifically. Uh, you know, I, I'm trying to get through some stuff here, but Trevor Bauer has looked awful lately. And I don't just mean, you know, he's had a few bad innings, a couple bad pitches to, to some dudes. He's looked all in all 
terrible. This is someone who's normally at 13, 14 strikeouts per inning, only getting nine, which again, that's significant for him to be that low. He's walking five and a half people per inning. Uh, and, you know, he's getting lucky with his uh, BABIP, the batting average against balls and plays only 178. But if that were league average, uh, his 1.22 whip would be in the 1.7, 1.8 range. Uh, his 5.50 ERA, you know, is masked by the 6.0 weight XFIP, uh, you know, basically Trevor Bauer has looked like someone with decent strikeout upside uh, who just hasn't been able to find it lately. And this is a Tampa Bay, uh, Tampa Bay Rays offense that does worry me. So while I can understand looking at the 9,800 price tag for Bauer as someone who has 40 DKP upside, any game that he pitches, you know, and, and want to run there, I, I would be more careful than that. Um, I, you know, Bauer hasn't had his command all year. I've been watching him since opening day. And while he's gotten the strikeouts uh, on back of it, you know, he hasn't really had uh, the command that he showed last year. So until he really gets that going, uh, you know, I'm going to, 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 to hold off on Bauer. I will tell you this, though. I expect uh, most people to, to play the same game. So it might be one of those things that's smarter in, in uh, GPPs. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is check what Roto Grinders has in terms of ownership projections. And you know what? I'm wrong. He's the one, two, three, four. He's tied for the third highest projected owned pitcher at 16%, uh, which is absolutely ludicrous. Uh, and that should not be happening. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I talked about this on Twitter briefly. I think because the Rockies bats are in such a good spot on DraftKings, obviously, not on FanDuel, we're going to see uh, some of these cheaper pitchers over-owned. Uh, so while people would want to pay for a Verlander, uh, because they want the Rockies bats, they're going to try to fit in a Bauer instead. Or while they would, you know, want a Wheeler, they're going to try to fit in, you know, a Chris Archer instead or an Eric Fetty, you know, I, I, you know, there are plenty of options here uh, with cheaper bats that you can get two decent upside mid-priced pitchers. Uh, and we don't have to worry about, you know, Trevor Bauer blowing up again. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, if you're playing 150, and I have a lot of people here that play a lot of lineups. If you're playing 150, have some exposure to Bauer, because like I said, he's one of the few pitchers on this slate that does have 40 DKP upside. So make sure you have some exposure, but you know, even if I was playing five lineups, uh, I, I, maybe I would have him once, but probably not. Honestly, I would probably try to find different combinations of Rockies bats. That's how much I want the Rockies. If I played five lineups, it would probably be four lineups where I primarily stack the Rockies in different combinations. Uh, and then another one where I do the twins probably. Uh, but, you know, that's that's a, a different kind of exercise. Uh, let's move on to the next game, which is the Dodgers and the Pirates. Uh, here we also don't have the Dodgers posting our lineup, and we have a chance of rain. Uh, I think that this game should be able to play. Uh, what I would expect is, uh, you know, kind of what happened yesterday, uh, where, you know, any risk you know they'll they would they would see coming and wait for and then be able to get a full game in after. Uh, I know the the risk of rain increases as the day goes on, and you know I would say I live close enough to Pittsburgh that I think it's fine, and they should be able to get a full game in. I don't really think uh, we have too much to worry about. You know the Indians have a little bit of risk on the on the upside, but I think that they'll be able to get that game in without a problem, regardless. Uh, but other than that, there's really no weather concerns that I have. Uh, so that being said, uh, Kenta Maeda, uh, you know, was coming off the IL. Uh, you know, we only had that one start when he, uh, in the last couple of weeks, but he does have one of those fun things where his FIP is negative 0 0.51 uh, because he pitched so well uh, on his one start that he got over the last couple of weeks, 16.2 strikeouts per nine without a walk. Uh, you know, zero ERA with, again, a negative 0 0.51. So I do like Maeda today. Um, if you are going uh, into the 9K range, uh, which, again, you might be able to do with some of these other bats uh, that pop up, uh, Kenta Maeda is not a terrible play. Uh, the Pirates are not a great offense. And specifically looking at the, the Pirates lineup, you know, Frazier, Polanco, Marte, Bell, 
are all fine. Uh, you know, Bell specifically, as I said before, is probably right now, if you're voting number three in the MVP vote in the National League, uh, and that's only because Bellinger and Yelich are playing like, you know, 1920s Babe Ruth uh, at this point. So Josh Bell on most other years would be the number one MVP. He's been playing that well lately. Uh, so, you know, while you can play him any day and while, you know, that Maida might have a, a problem with him, uh, you know, Polanco and Marte are good bats. I'm not worried about Brian Reynolds or Colin Moran or Elias Diaz or Kevin Newman at the bottom of the order or the pitcher. So that's five bats in a row that Maida should be able to get through. Uh, again, 9,500 is a little much if you want to get those cores bats in, but I can understand fitting them in uh, and just sacrificing one other bat somewhere uh, because I do like him a lot and I think he does have a significant upside. I do think that, you know, Wheeler has similar upside though uh, against a worse lineup. So, you know, you can get some get some savings on that, but Wheeler does come with significant risk. The one issue I have, and pardon me, as I've talked about many, many times, because it makes me about as angry as anything else, the Dodgers have the tightest leashes on all of their pitchers. So even if you're throwing a perfect game, uh, and it's the eighth inning. They're not going to let you come out the ninth because 100 is this magic number. You know, the fact that the one has two zeros after it means that if you pass it more than like five times in a season, your arm falls off, according to the Wizards that run the Dodgers clubhouse. Uh, I think they got Gandalf's ghost and, uh, you know, Merlin came back from the dead and then Rasputin's, you know, hanging out to help him. You know, they, they never threw over 100 pitchers, so they got to last forever. Uh, so, you know, Maida coming off the IL, I wouldn't expect to get more than 80, 85. Uh, and, you know, any limit in pitches for someone over 9,000 is, is something that I'm not really going to bite at. So, you know, while I can understand playing him in GPP, uh, while I do think he's in a good spot, when all is said and done, I, I just don't think he's going to get that much over 85 pitches. And I just don't want to play someone at 9,500 that, that has, uh, you know, that, uh, that set a ceiling. I want someone who, you know, look at uh, Patrick Corbin yesterday. I believe, uh, you know, he got, I know he got the complete game shutout, but I believe they let him get to like 113 pitches, 130 pitches of depending on if I heard it correctly or not. Um, they said it on the TV that I was watching yesterday, uh, one of the games that I was watching. You know, I want to, I want a pitcher that that has that chance where if they're pitching well enough, you know, maybe they'll hold him back next start, but they'll let him finish the job. Uh, the Dodgers are not going to do that. So, ninety five hundred is going to be a little more than I'm, I'm willing to pay for Meta. But again, it depends on on what you want. I can understand taking the safety there. I can understand getting exposure to him if you're doing the one fifty. Chris Archer at 6,300. So like I said, I want value today. If this were almost any other team that Archer was pitching against, I would have him uh, not locked, but I would have him as one of my options, but I just can't. The Dodgers are too much, man. 5.3 runs. And I think that that is conservative. Uh, even with the weather conditions, you know, the humidity's up, the rain, you know, if there's light rain in the area and they play through it, that's a, that's, that's a slight bump. Uh, to them downgrade. I say bump to mean downgrade. Other people say it to mean boost. So I will, I will use downgrade. Uh, but you know, Archer is a little, uh, is cheap. I understand wanting to go there, but unless the Dodgers lineup comes out and they're resting some people, which again, we'll talk about if that happens. Uh, no, thank you. Uh, so let's move on to the next game. We have uh, Caleb Smith and Eric Fetty for the Marlins versus the Nationals. This is one where uh, FanDuel, if you are on FanDuel, Caleb Smith is my favorite pitcher on FanDuel. I looked over the slate once someone told me that the Rockies weren't on because I wanted to be able to talk about uh, both on the video. And it's the Rockies are that significant that you know, it kind of does change everything. So uh, I, I think that you know the Nationals... Uh, have been uh, shifting between striking out the most in Major League Baseball and like fourth most in Major League Baseball. Either way, they strike out a ton. Um, Caleb Smith is a high strikeout pitcher with fantastic stuff. Uh, and, you know, I just would, I, I think that given 
Uh, his price on FanDuel, given what I would think is a lack of ownership of more people going up to Verlander, uh, I think Caleb Smith is going to be the best guy there. Uh, on DraftKings, like I said, if you're going to go in the 9K range for a Maeda, just pay the 200 more for a Caleb Smith, uh, if you can. Whatever bat you got to sacrifice, you know. If you're doing that, do it. I'm not going to go there because it's just too expensive for me to get the Rockies bats in because uh, I'm getting five Rockies bats in. But overall, uh, give me Caleb Smith. Yankees lineup just came out, but I haven't gotten to them yet, so that does not matter. I'll get there later. Uh, and then Eric Fetty. <clears throat> so Eric Fetty is not a great pitcher, but Eric Fetty is not the worst pitcher going today. Uh, the thing that we need to understand is he is 6,500, right? 6,500, if you want him to get 3X, he needs to get 19 0.5 DKP. Uh, I don't think there's any way he's going to do that. Uh, and I think that the Marlins uh, have been hitting well enough that what I expect is that Eric Fetty's ownership to be uh, significantly higher than it should be. So that being said, while I don't recommend this as a, you know, uh, something to do if you're playing one lineup. It is going to be really sneaky today to get some Marlins bats. Uh, if you look at my lineups page on the bathroom sport at bathrobesports.com uh, slash lineups, uh, I go over all of the hot and cold players and I label them uh, on the lineups page as hot or cold. And I do that by looking at a few metrics, but I basically, you know, I understand what means hot and what means cold, WOBA, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, I, I've gone over it before. I can go over it again on a smaller slate when I have more time to talk. But if you look at the Marlins over the last week, Granderson, Harold Ramirez, and Brian Anderson are all what I would classify as hot hitters. Uh, and they're the one, two, three today. And then there is not a single cold hitter on the Marlins, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, I have to double check Dean because he's the only one that was added to the lineup. And I'm pretty sure he was cold. Uh, but even if that is the case, Dean is, yes, Dean is ice cold. So while, you know, they have one cold bat in the lineup, uh, that is still not bad for a Marlins team, honestly. Um, a Marlins team that has spent most of the season projected to get three or fewer runs uh, is projected to get over four today. So, you know, I think Fetty's ownership is going to be too much and not justified. I don't think he has the upside. And on top of that, the Nationals have the worst bullpen in baseball. Uh, I talked about this as well a week ago, and I think it's worth pointing out again. Uh, the Cubs uh, were playing... Oh man, I think it was the Nationals, uh, I, and I believe they were. It was Strasburg or Scherzer that was pitching, and I talked about how uh, even though you don't necessarily want to take the Cubs against the starting pitcher, uh, you know if they get pulled early, that is a wealth that the bullpen is going to be able to give up. And the Cubs wound up getting, I think, 11 or 12 runs in the three innings that the bullpen pitched. And that is something that is going to happen frequently with the Nats. If you watched uh, the Mets-Nats series, the four-gamer, I believe the Nats had the lead almost every single game, and the bullpen blew it up because the bullpen really is that terrible. So again, while it's not going to be something that I, I recommend uh, overtly. If you're playing one lineup, it's not going to be, you know, the lock of the day. There are plenty of other Oh, see? Thank you, James. You're going into the... I know we talked about this uh, We talked about this uh, yesterday, I believe, or maybe it was a couple days ago. James and I uh, were talking about how we've been looking a lot about uh, what pitchers uh, what pitches a pitcher throws and then how well batters do against that. Uh, you know, for example, the Twins, all of them are amazing against hitting fastballs. So when they're going against a fastball pitcher, you know, they get a boost. Uh, you know, and what James pointed out here in the chat is that Fetty throws a fastball or a slider 90% of the time, and Ramirez and Anderson are the number two and the three bats on Miami against sliders, meaning that they are going to be boosted for the pitch type that Fetty throws on top. So again, they've been hot lately. Uh, they are going to be unowned because they're the Marlins. And while I am not uh, going to play them in the one lineup, uh, probably, uh, I'm not going to say that for sure, because we'll see how it, you know, when the Rockies lineup comes out, how everything, uh, you know, falls. But I will say that Granderson, Harold Ramirez, and Brian Anderson are 
real if you want to take a mini Marlins stack, I wouldn't hate it. And I don't think anyone else is going to do it. And they have a good chance of scoring some runs, even if not against Fetty, against the bullpen. Uh, you know, they are the road team. And as I've pointed out, the road team gets nine chances at bat. Even if they have a 10 run lead, it doesn't matter. Nine chances at bat is nine chances at bat. That's extra chances for them to get points for you. And that's the most important thing. So uh, again, while might not be the best stack. I think the Marlins are one of the sneakiest stacks. The highest priced guy here is Granderson at 3,800. Ramirez 3,400 is way too cheap. Anderson has been really on fire at 3,700. That's absolutely ridiculous. So while no one's under 3,000, uh, no one really deserves to be given how they've been hitting lately, except for Dean and, you know, just avoid him in the, in the seven hole. Uh, so let's move on. Next game is Phillies and Brewers. Uh, if you look at it, Brandon Woodruff is going to be the second highest owned pitcher on the slate uh, on DraftKings. And I can understand that 6,600 uh, for the upside that Woodruff showed a couple of weeks ago is definitely understandable. Uh, in my video a couple of weeks ago, I spent a lot of time uh, digging into Woodruff and his numbers and showing why uh, it looks like he's kind of taken a step forward this year. Uh, I didn't, I, you know, I said specifically, I don't think uh, he's moved into the ace tier uh, by any means, but I think that Woodruff definitely did make a step forward. However, uh, you know, there are a few things that we need to consider. First, the Phillies are a very good offense. Uh, I don't think we can ignore that. Second, Woodruff has not been in fantastic form lately. Uh, if you look at, an, you know, oh, you know what? Check that. Wow. He's gotten the hell of DKP lately. Wow, that's much better than the advanced stats point out. I did not check DKP. So over his last two starts, he's had 23 and 23.9 DKP, but the advanced stats do not back that up. Uh, Woodruff over the last couple of weeks uh, has a seven uh, strikeouts per nine with a 3.2 walks per nine. Uh, oh, I see what it is. Okay. See, I looked at the FIP of 4.45 and the XFIP of 4.23 with the Sierra of 4.64. I look at those and say, oh, he's not been doing well the last couple of weeks. But what we have is a, a, a batting average against of 130, which is luck and unsustainable, and a BABIP against of 121, which might be the lowest I've seen uh, looking at this. Nope. Justin Verlander has a BABIP of 0.38 in the last two weeks, but that's Verlander. Uh, so basically what we've seen is Woodruff pitching uh, or punching above his weight class to use an idiom. Uh, so while he's a good pitcher, and, and and again, I do think that Woodruff is better than we think. I, I And while I do like the 6,600 price tag, uh, the fact that he is the second highest owned pitcher according to Roto Grinders or projected to be the second highest owned pitcher according to Roto Grinders makes me want to pivot off him and take some of the other pitchers uh, considering that he's going to be overvalued based on the fact that he is pitching uh, above his head lately. Hey, DJ dog, how you doing, man? So yeah, Woodruff is going to be far, far too owned. Uh, and so while I can understand going there, uh, not for the second highest owned pitcher on the slate, uh, Okay, that's chatting. Okay, uh, and then on the other side, Zach Eflin is also not fantastic. Uh, and this is a Brewers team projected to get over five runs. So they are priced high enough that I would rather take, uh, you know, some other bats. Dodgers lineup is out, so I could talk about uh, Archer now uh, with, with finality. Uh, the one thing I will point out is that uh, Lorenzo Cain uh, is out. Um, and Ben Gamel is leading off, which is an outfielder for 3,600 uh, in a really good spot hitting in front of Christian Yelich. So uh, if you are looking for one of those like mid 3K uh, batters in the outfield, Ben Gamel is definitely, definitely a decent bat there. Uh, but the Phillies, you know, McCutcheon's been hot. They're just, none of them have been really cold lately. It's just, uh, I would rather take the Phillies against the second highest owned pitcher. Uh, when Woodruff has, you know, has shown that he's not necessarily the best. Uh, so now we have Maida uh, with Peterson, Muncie, Turner, Bellinger, Beatty, Seeger, Hernandez, and Barnes. Yeah, that's the normal lineup. So no thank you to Archer. Uh, it takes them longer to adjust them down, DJ Dog. He's noticed that on DraftKings, when someone gets hot, the price catapults up uh, very, very quickly. Or trebuchets up, depending on uh, what site you're using. Uh, but 
when they get cold, it takes a longer time to adjust. And that's the way it is. You know, you get priced up and then it's a lot harder to play you for a couple of weeks until they go back to normal. It's the same in NBA though. You know, we see guys, you know, how long did it take Harden when, uh, when Paul and Capella came back for his price to get back into the 11 K range, uh, much less in the 10 K. I don't even know if he went into 10 K again uh, for the rest of the season. So yeah, you know, I'd rather take Phillies bats than Woodruff, especially again, uh, you know, if you're playing against the field in a GPP, uh, having Phillies bats against the second highest owned pitcher uh, is definitely, definitely worth it. Uh, let's move on to the next game here, uh, which is the Red Sox and the Astros. Man, I really want that Blue Jays lineup out, man. That is going to mean a lot. And that game starts in like an hour and a half and the lineup still hasn't come out yet. Um Red Sox Astros, we have Verlander and Rodriguez uh, ignoring price and everything. Verlander's the best pitcher today. He's been in the best form, has the highest upside, but he's 11,000. Uh, and again, I'd rather have the Rockies bats because I think that there are a couple Rockies bats that can outscore Verlander by themselves today, given the way the Rockies game is going to look. Uh, but if you are playing on FanDuel, uh, I would not mind having Verlander whatsoever as your one pitcher. Like I said, I think given the savings, I would rather have Caleb Smith, uh, especially considering that he's going against a much higher strikeout team uh, with a you know much easier to get through than Verlander against the Red Sox, uh, you know, who have pretty much their normal lineup today. Uh, and everybody on the Red Sox has been hitting well, except for J.D. Martinez. So Verlander is not necessarily in the best spot. Uh, and again, I'd rather have the, the Rockies bats, although on FanDuel again, I definitely understand that the one pitcher thing going for him, but I'd just rather have. Uh... Oh, that's cool. I would rather have Caleb Smith. So um, I think that if you're going anywhere in this game, my favorite is going to be, uh, you have two options. You can either, you know, buck the trend and go with some of the Astros bats. Uh, you know, they are cheap enough that I can understand going there. You know, they, they were over 5K, uh, last week, at all of them, uh, you know, led by George Springer. And now we're seeing Diaz at 4,000, Bregman 46, Correa 45, Guriel, who hasn't been great this year, but he's only 33. Reddick, who's actually been hot lately at 3,900. Uh, they brought Derek Fisher up at 3,900, so don't play him. Uh, you know, granted, I say that he's going to hit like six home runs, and that's the only six home runs he'll ever hit. But what what I think would be sneakier today is taking Eduardo Rodriguez. I don't love it. So again, do not get me wrong. I do not think Eduardo Rodriguez is a fantastic play, but Eduardo, Eduardo Rodriguez is in those category of pitchers that I've talked about, the Masahiro Tanaka category, where uh, how well they do that day uh, depends on how they feel. Uh, they can do amazingly against any team, anywhere, anytime. So, you know, that's that's the Tanaka, the John Gray, the Eduardo Rodriguez. There's there's a whole lot of pitchers who have that ace caliber stuff and the movement. They have a couple of pitches that can really get you down. Uh, but a lot of times they just aren't feeling it and they, they just don't have uh, the control that they would like to. If Eduardo Rodriguez has that, he's going to go unowned at 7,200 7, and be able to get you 25 to 30 DKP. So again, while I don't think that it's the safest play, if you are trying to get those Rockies bats in, that is someone with upside. I'd rather go to him uh, you know, I wouldn't, I think I'd rather have Turnbull than him, but I'd rather have him than Woodruff uh, by, by a large, by a large, by a large margin there. Uh, but, you know, we're, it, now we're getting to the, like, how risky do you want to get to fit in the Rockies? For me, very risky because it really does mean that, that, that much to get the Rockies in. Uh, but now we're going to get to another fun one. I really like this one a lot too. Uh, the, the White Sox and the Twins, the Twins total uh, moved up from 6.5 to 6.6 .6 since I started doing the video, uh, which is absolutely incredible. Uh, I mean, that's just, it really is fantastic. Uh, so again, FanDuel, the Twins are a run and a half higher than the next closest team on the slate. The Twins are going to be who you focus on. On DraftKings, if you don't want to play the Rockies, the number two stack is going to be the Twins. If you can fit Rockies and Twins, in like a 5-3, I would rather have five Rockies. Or a 4-2, a 4-3-1, or a 5-2-1, or whatever. Uh, I would try to do that. 
Uh, we have a Twins team that is absolutely on fire, and they are going against the second worst pitcher on the slate in Dylan Covey. Uh, fortunately for us, the Rockies are going against the worst pitcher on the slate with the worst bullpen. So the Twins have everything going for them. They are on fire. They hit more home runs than anybody, which is fantastic for us. Uh, they're going against an absolutely abysmal pitcher, a run total creeping up to seven runs. Uh, so what I'm looking at here is a lot of really expensive pitchers, uh, a lot of expensive hitters, excuse me, but some value that can be had. So first up, what I want to do, because this is so significant in terms of the stack, I want to go over the recent form with you guys in, in greater detail. Uh, so what we're looking for in terms of hot for me, uh, or you, you get a free pass if your OPS is over 1,000 and your WOBA is over 400. If both of those are true, you've been hot the last week uh, without any other thought. So let's take a look at the players on the Twins over the last seven days uh, who have, you know what, I want to separate this because I want to look at the lineup as well while I'm doing this. The Twins players that are in the lineup today uh, that have an OPS over 1,000 and a WOBA over 400. So we have Max Kepler, OPS 1.737 with a WOBA of 671 leading off. Jorge Polanco, a OPS of 1.142 with a WOBA of 483. That's guys batting second. Marwin Gonzalez, not hot, but still decent. But let's not talk about it. Eddie Rosario, 1.132 OPS with a WOBA of 472, batting cleanup. CJ Cron, 1.036 OPS with a 433 WOBA, batting fifth. Luis Arias, 1.248 OPS with a 506 WOBA, batting sixth with second and third base eligibility, only 3,700 on DraftKings. Hello. That's the play of the day. Astudio has been cold lately. His Woba is under 200 with an OPS of 423, so I would ignore him. Uh, Castro was riding a hot streak, but he has cooled off significantly. A 400, excuse me, a 481 OPS with a 217 Woba, so I would ignore him. And then Buxton, uh, again, he was riding a hot, uh, uh, you know, riding it hot for a few weeks there, but he has cooled off. He is the coldest hitter. Uh, in this lineup, a 261 OPS with a 130 Woba over the last week. Uh, so if you are playing the Twins, Kepler, Polanco, Rosario, Kron, and Areas are the five that I want to focus on, bar none. Uh, I can understand Marwin Gonzalez has been hot enough at 4,100. I can understand taking uh, the savings that you would get because you're going to get at least 1,000 savings uh, from the three other bigger bats there. Uh, and I, I definitely want to make sure I get some Twins bats. So theoretically, what you can do uh, is get five Rockies bats, two of those mid-price pitchers, and at least Luis Areas for 3,700. And you're going to be in a really good spot, really good spot. If you can get Marwin Gonzalez in as well in the three-hole, or even better, a CJ Cron in, who Nelly, you're doing yourself a favor because that's going to be a hell of a lineup. That's going to put up a hell of a lot of points. Next up. Uh, oh, you know what? I didn't talk about Odorizzi. Odorizzi is another good pitcher with, he doesn't have the highest strikeout upside, but he generally goes underrated. Uh, I think his ownership today is going to be higher than it should be again, because of people, uh, you know, desperate for the value so they can get in those expensive bats. Let me see where Odorizzi is. Nope. He is 9%. So 8,200, you can do decently for Odorizzi. I would expect him to do well against uh, the White Sox, especially considering that, as I've pointed out uh, several times in the past, Odorizzi is one of the most extreme reverse splits pitchers in baseball. Uh, Odorizzi, uh, the pitches move in such a way, and I've talked about this, that if if your ball moves in a screwball fashion, which is to say that it... it yeah, so oh, I don't even know how to how to word it. If it moves away from opposite-handed batters, so if you're a righty and the ball moves away from a lefty as opposed to like a slider that moves in on a lefty, uh, you are generally going to be a reverse splits pitcher, and Odorizzi is one whose stuff moves away and down. Uh, so he is 
easier for righties to hit and harder uh, for lefties to hit. So you have right now uh, Lurie Garcia, who's going to be batting lefty, Moncada, who's going to be batting lefty, Alonso, who's going to be batting lefty, Tilson, who's going to be batting lefty, and Yolmer Sanchez, who's going to be batting lefty. That's the one, two, four, six, and eight hitters, uh, which is a boost to Odorizzi. And then on top of that, they have Zebi Zalava catching. Now you might say, did I just make that name up? And you would think that that's the case, but it's not. You might say, is that the dude that left One Direction? Also not the answer. Zebi Salava is the catcher today for the Chicago White Sox for 3000 if you want to pay way too much money for someone who's going to do terribly. Uh, but the point is, you know, while Abreu uh, does worry me. While Eloy Jimenez and Tim Anderson are good right-handed bats that hit righties well, and all three of them have been hitting well recently, uh, while those three do worry me, I think Odorizzi is going to have his way with most of the lineup. Uh, and I think that this is a White Sox team that boosts his strikeout upside enough that at 8,200, he can be one of those mid-range guys that we fit in, uh, especially to get off of uh, Wheeler, who's going to be the highest owned pitcher today, according to Roto Grinders, at 27%. Uh, I would have also expected Wheeler to be one of the highest owned pitchers today, uh, but I would have expected Odorizzi to be in the 15% range. Regardless, uh, Odorizzi at a price discount, less upside, absolutely, but an easy lineup uh, against a lot of lefties and a few bad righties. Uh, you know, I think Odorizzi is a decent enough chance today that you can take him. Uh, but again, understand that it's not a slam dunk and it does come with risk. Uh, so next up is going to be the Yankees and the Kansas City Royals. Uh, we have Domingo Herman, who I absolutely love, and Danny Duffy. Danny Duffy is a question mark for me. So Danny Duffy... Is, some, is someone that had fantastic strikeout stuff when he came up. He was striking out 10, 11 people per nine innings almost every single start. Granted, he had some where he blew up and he walked a ton of people, but he was someone who showed you, uh, you know, wildness, but wildness effectively, uh, as they say in baseball. You know, he was effectively wild where – you know, sometimes when you don't know where the ball's going to go, but it's close enough to the plate, the batter doesn't know where the ball's going to go, and your stuff moves enough, you can get away with it. Uh, so we have Danny Duffy, who, uh, you know, came back from injury and hasn't shown the strikeout upside that he normally would have. Uh, but it's, you know, there's a few things with him that 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 make me like him, right? So first up, we don't have a serious wind blowing out. It should be blowing across the field. He's a, he's a, a, a strikeout and a fly ball pitcher. Uh, so against the Yankees, I think that's not a bad matchup. They strike out a lot. They're prone to pop-ups. You could do a lot worse. Again, 6,800 is the reason I'm talking about him here. If he was 8,000, I would have laughed and brushed him off. Uh, but if, you know, let's look at the last, you know, he's had five starts. The first one was, you know, his tune-up start. So he's had four real starts since then. 100 pitches, 19.3 DKP against a good Tampa Bay offense. 19, uh, excuse me, 100 pitches, 19 DKP, 6.2 innings pitched against a really good Houston offense against lefties. Uh, 107 pitches, 14.5 DKP, uh, and the win against Texas, a good offense. And then in his last start, 20.1 DKP, 106 pitches against the LA Angels. Again, not a great, but a good offense. Who have Mike Trout? Uh, so I think that Danny Duffy has shown in the last four starts that even against good offenses, uh, he has decent enough strikeout stuff with 20 DKP upside that you can take the chance there at 6,800. Now, I'm not saying this is safe. Do not play him if you are not averse to risk because this is a hot-hitting Yankees team who is very, very good, very, very good against lefties. But that being said, when he went against the Astros and got that 20 DKP, the Astros were on fire. And the Astros are a much better. I would say the Astros are the first or second best team in Major League Baseball against lefties. And Duffy shut them down relatively well. He's good for 100 pitches. He's good at, at what he does. Uh, and for 6,800, I think that you can take the upside there. Uh, I would much much rather have Danny Duffy uh, than Woodruff. 
uh, or um, uh, excuse me, what's uh, what's the dude's name? Uh, Turnbull. So if you're going in the under 7K range, uh, I think Beeks is also there. What was Beeks? Beeks is 76, so no. Uh, so yeah, I like Beeks at 76 again, but Duffy in the under 7,000 range is going to be my guy. Uh, I really, you know, call it a risk, but oh boy. Um, Wheeler and Smith, Odorizzi and Hermen, or Verlander and Duffy. Ooh, give me Wheeler and Smith out of that. I think they have the higher upside. Wheeler and Smith could both give you 40 point outings today. And I would think that Verlander is going to get you 40 at most and Duffy will get you 25 to 30. So I think Wheeler and Smith uh, will have the higher projection and a slightly higher ceiling. Uh, but that's a good question. Wheeler and Smith or Verlander and Duffy is a very good question today. Um, You know, let me, let me say one thing though, James, let me, Verlander is one of the less owned pitchers and Wheeler is one of the highest owned pitchers as is Smith. So if this is GPP, I might take the risk and go Verlander Duffy because the ownership on both of those guys is so much less than what they should be. And the ownership for Wheeler and Smith is pretty high. So yeah, I would honestly, looking at ownership, looking at everything else, I think Wheeler and Smith is the better play, but the fact that they're both so significantly popular, I think I think that uh, you know, I think Verlander and Duffy's going to give me the edge there. Hmm. Oh, that's awesome, Ethan. How cool is that? I like uh, I like CS:GO a lot. Um. Anyway, let's keep going here. Uh, so we are on the Yankees and the Red Sox, still waiting for that the Blue Jays lineup, right? Yeah, that is crazy. Uh, so the Yankees are playing pretty much their normal lineup. Uh, LeMahieu, Voigt, Hicks, Sanchez, Torres uh, have all been fantastic lately. Morales has been cold as anything. Frazier's hot. Urshela comes through in the late innings, and Mabin's not a very good hitter. Uh, but that's a decent, a decent lineup. Uh, and then Hermen is a good pitcher, but again, today, don't mind playing them. think there are better pitchers priced around him. I would rather go up to Verlander if you're going to pay up for the pitcher or go down to Caleb Smith than pay for Hermen today. Uh, this is, as I've explained many times, a small ball Royals team that is really good at making it really annoying. So while they're not the best offense and while, you know, I don't project them to get seven or eight runs, you know, Lopez Merrifield Mondesi is a really, really annoying one, two, three. And if Hamilton can get on, that's a nine through three. That's going to steal bases and play some damn, damn good small ball. So, you know, I like Herman, don't get me wrong, but I would rather pay up if you're going to pay up uh, for Verlander or go down slightly more and then, you know, maybe get one bat up a couple extra hundred. Uh, so, Again, Rockies bats being the priority. Danny Duffy, man. I I can't shake it. I just can't shake it. Don't love it, but I can't shake it. Uh, so we got two games left on the main slate here. Uh, we've got the Cubs and the Reds, both of whom have confirmed their lineups. That makes that easier. Uh, so we have Quintana and Rourke. Uh, Quintana is someone with decent strikeout upside who I just don't like. Uh, he hasn't been... Uh, particularly good lately. Uh, where is it? 6.5 strikeouts per nine, 3.3 walks per nine. He's getting lucky with the average against and the, the BABIP. And that's, you know, evidence. You, when you see this, like a, a step, like you're going up steps, uh, it always tells you a lot. So 2.45 ERA, 3.91 FIP, 4.81 XFIP, and then a 4.97 Sierra. Uh, when when you see that, it means that you have someone who's been getting lucky uh, over the last couple of weeks. And I would expect that, you know, while that luck may continue for 7,700 and you can take that chance, uh, there are some people that I would rather take the chance on other than him who are going to be, ex excuse me, less owned than him. He is projected to be 15% one of the higher owned pitchers on the slate. Uh, and again, this is a Reds team that, you know, while they may not be the best, and, and anyone that tells you they are is crazy. They strike out, you know, around the league average. They're not at the bottom, you know, like some other teams today. 
Uh, and they are, you know, they, they are de more decent than you would think against lefties. Senzel has shown he's good against lefties. Suarez, uh, Iglesias, Peraza, and then Casali, you'd be surprised, uh, are all decent against lefties. So Quintana is someone, you know, you can use him. He'll help you get those Rocky spats in. Just be aware that I would play him in GPPs and even then uh, know that he is, oh, the Rockies lineup. Even then know that he's going to be risky uh, and he's going to be high owned. So I would rather take someone uh, with similar risk and similar upside who isn't going to be owned at all and might even save me a couple hundred. Uh, someone like that being a Tanner Roark. Uh, again, this is something that might surprise you. Roark's been, uh, he's been pretty good lately. Uh, where is he? 11.7 strikeouts per nine, uh, 3.6 walks per nine. Not great, but he's, you know, he's shown the opposite. You know, the ERA is 4.5, XFIP is 3.79, and his FIP is 1.7. Uh, so he's been pitching better than he's shown. And at 7,000, again, I'm not saying that he's going to get you 30 points. I'm not saying he's going to set the world on fire with his smile. You know, he's not Mary Tyler Moore in it out there today, but he's someone who, again, the last four starts, 18.3, 11.9, 20.5, 25.4 DKP. He's shown you the upside at 7,000 than we would want to see today. Uh, and, you know, while this is not a resting Cubs lineup, this is one that Roark, as a ground ball pitcher, could have some success against. This is a Cubs lineup that on other days might be projected to get over five runs, only projected to get 4.2 today. So, you know, Roark at 7,000 is just too underpriced. Uh, so again, if you're, if you're spending down to get those bats today, and I do emphasize that you need to do that on DraftKings, uh, Roark is going to be one of my favorite plays. Uh, I think he's, you know, he's shown good upside lately. Uh, that 20 DKP is what I want to see. And he's been getting there. You know, that's, that's what, that's what it is. I will also add that, you know, again, along with the Cubs total being low, uh, the wind is not blowing in significantly. So I don't think, you know, I need to ra wave any flags here. Uh, but as I've pointed out, the wind is a factor in Wrigley. So blowing in at six miles an hour, isn't going to, uh, isn't going to be a, a huge boost to any of the pitchers here. But the important thing is the wind has been blowing out recently, uh, sometimes at double digits. So we have much better game environment in terms of the weather for Roark uh, than his, his, his teammates over the last few days. So Roark at 7,000 isn't someone I'm, you know, I'm locking in, but he's someone that if you're trying to get those Rockies bats in, yeah, damn. You know, I like both of them a lot. I would... I would rather have, I think I'm going to answer. James has a question. Would I, okay, I'll answer both of these questions. Cody, would I play Duffy on FanDuel? No, absolutely not. You do not need to go cheap pitching on FanDuel today because you don't have to, 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 to get those Rockies bats in no matter what. Uh, getting those Rockies bats in is the utmost importance today. You can get a Caleb Smith on FanDuel, which is what I recommend. He's my favorite uh, pitcher priced on FanDuel. Uh, I think he's under, you know, under 10K for the upside. Uh, I absolutely love him. And then you can get enough twins in and fill it in with whomever you want uh, that you should be doing fine, especially, uh, you know, I think a raise is only 3,000. You get some decent twins bats with Caleb Smith and still be able to put together a good and functional lineup. You do not need to punt pitcher on FanDuel. Uh, for James's question, Duffy and Roark are about the same. So who would I play? Uh, so again, I, I really want to play Beeks today. So I, I think I'm going to go to him for 7,600 uh, against this Cleveland team, but I would find it perfectly logical to play both Roark and Duffy if you want. If you are going to only pick one, I think that Roark is safer and would have slightly higher upside. But I trust Duffy to get deeper in the game. Do you understand what I mean? So, like, I, I know Duffy's going to get his 100 pitches. I don't think he's going to have as much problem with the Yankees. But I think that Roark, when all is said and done, is going to be a safer play. Okay. Excellent. Glad. Okay, so let's let's move on to the last game in the main slate here. We're going to look at the Orioles and the Rockies. Oh, boy. So the Blue Jays still haven't put out their lineup yet, and I'm trying to wait to do that. Uh, but we have 
Yes, thank you, James. Roark for less innings, but more reliable versus the firecracker that is Danny Duffy. Thank you. That's a very good way of putting it. I do appreciate that. Uh, so now we have the Rockies. Rockies projected to get, again, almost eight runs. I don't, I don't honestly, I've been following DFS and baseball for a really long time. A really long time. I don't remember ever seeing a 7.9 run total before in my life. I really don't. You know, uh, the Rockies is minus 319 over the Orioles is, is crazy enough, but almost getting eight runs, even in Coors Field, that like getting over six is something. Getting two seven would be like, oh my God, someone got projected to get seven runs in Coors Field, but getting to eight, that you have to crack your voice there for, for just the effect of it. Uh, so yeah, give me all the Rockies that you can. Let us look deeper into this because this is going to be the significant, the significant stuff that we need to look at. Recent form over the last week. I'm going to do what I did for the Twins and go through the lineup with you guys because we're going to want to fit these dudes in and who we play is going to be the most important part, right? Because if you, if you don't think the Rockies are going to be the most uh, owned stack today, you're kidding yourself. They are. Far and away. Everyone sees that eight run total and is doing the same thing I am, which is jumping jacks. And well, my ball, oh, yeah, I'll get to that too, because I'm going to talk about Baltimore bats, but their lineup hasn't come out. So I'm trying not to talk about uh, what I guess lineups are going to be while all the lineups are coming out anyway, because then I just have to go back and talk about it again anyway. Uh, there are a few Orioles bats that I do. I do really like today, and I will get to that because I do like the Orioles as a stack, and I think that with all the attention on the Rockies and the Twins, for good reason, mm -hmm. there are a couple of those stacks that are going to fly under the radar. And the Orioles, you know, like I said, are not the worst team in the world. I mean, they're one of the worst teams in the world, but their offense isn't the worst in the world. Their pitching is. So let's look at the Rockies' recent form lately because this is going to be uh, really important in terms of who we're going to play. So again, I'm going to look specifically at OPS and WOBA for the purposes of, of talking about this. We have Ramel Tapia leading off, 4,800. His OPS over the last week is 399 with a WOBA of 182, and that's including the couple of games against the Orioles. So I think that what you will see here is overwhelming ownership on Tapia because he's leaning off. I think he's going to be one of the fades I have. And I think that if you are playing a Rocky stack, fading him, uh, you know, it might hurt you. You never know. This Orioles pitcher is, you know, Hess is as bad as it gets in the major leagues in terms of how many home runs he gives up in terms of everything. And he's in Coors Field against these Rockies team. But I think that Tapia has been ice cold lately, like Andre 3000 just called. And the new answer to what's cooler than being cool is Ramel Tapia. So, you know, I don't want to play him anymore. At 399 OPS and a 182 Woba, he's going to be the one Rocky that I am absolutely off. And batting lean off, I think he's going to have one of the highest ownerships. So that's where I'm taking uh, one of my stands. Everyone else, though, looks pretty damn good. So let's look at that. Trevor Story, uh, 5,600 for the shortstop. OPS of 1.234, 1234 with a Woba of 497. Mwah. David Dahl, 911 OPS with a Woba of 396. Ooh, that's great. $200 savings on Tapia as well, uh, who I've pronounced, whose name I've pronounced four different ways in the last five minutes. Nolan Arenado, 5700 OPS of 1.420 with a 585 Woba over the last week. He is my favorite hitter on the day. He's almost definitely going to hit a home run today. His ISO is 440. Trevor Stories is 481. You have to play both of these guys today. Do whatever you can to play them. Uh, Murphy looks like he's getting hot, but over the last week, if you looked at these numbers a couple days ago, you would understand why I'm saying that because his numbers were uh, much further down than that. But now his OPS over the last week is 890 with a WOBA of 367. Uh, while that fills up a first base slot, not terrible. Uh, one of the sneakier ones I like, Brendan Rogers, uh, who wasn't projected to be in the lineup by most places, uh, second base and shortstop eligible. Uh, so you can get him in at shortstop and still play story. Uh, 929 OPS with a 400 Woba. 
Uh, the one thing about him is he's not getting any extra base hits. His ISO is only 071. So while I would prefer a Murphy, you know, a 286 ISO, any of those other guys that are really hitting it, I would have preferred a McMahon. Uh, Rogers is going to go under-owned in this stack. Ian Desmond is, is one of the things I want to point out here. Uh, granted, I'm not going to play him, or I don't want to play him. 4,300 is too much for him against a righty first of all. Uh, but the 734 and the 333 Woba is not going to be good enough given the rest of the team. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you talking to me, James, or someone else? Um, Baltimore just came out with their lineup. Great. So I can talk about that too. Still no Toronto lineup. Am I missing something? Uh, the one, I don't know. Uh, did I agree to do a, a DK challenge? Okay, I'm so confused right now. I am so confused right now, James. I am so sorry. I don't... Uh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, no problem. I will do that after I'm done with the video. Hopefully we'll have enough time to get it done. Um, and then, so Ian Desmond, not so much. And then Tony Walters, uh, 891 OPS with a 367 Woba and a 333 ISO. Uh, so while I think what a lot of people, I think a lot of people are just going to go one through five Rockies because that's the easiest way to do it. People are lazy. Uh, I think that the guys I'm focused on are Story, Dahl, Arenado, Murphy, and then Tony Walters at catcher. Now that's going to be hard because a lot of the times the easiest place to punt is catcher, right? We all know it. The catchers are the $2,200, $2,300 ones. I've already talked about a couple of them today. Uh, so it's going to hurt you in terms of lineup construction to get Tony Walters in, but that is also going to separate you from a majority of the field playing the Rockies. You get a, a, a left-handed hitter who's had a great ISO uh, recently with a good OPS, a great WOBA in good form. That's going to go under owned. And while 4,100 might be a lot, it's not really a lot if he gets you 15 to 20 DKP and the 2,200 pitcher you got gives you nothing, which most of the time a 2,200 pitcher is going to get you. And Martin Maldonado, you know, he's 2,200 because he gives you like 1.7 DKP a game on average throughout the course of the year. And that means maybe he gets a walk today. You know, it's not that great. So Walters is in a great spot. I think that not playing Tapia and playing Walters is going to be a great way of separating yourself from the field. Uh, and like I said, while Rogers and Desmond are sneakier plays, I like them less than Story, Dahl, Arenado, Murphy, and Walters. So those are going to be the five bats I look to lock in and then put the pitching in and then see what other bats uh, I can talk about. So now we have the uh, Baltimore Orioles lineup. Uh, in so let's talk about them. Uh, I wouldn't, I want to say one thing Herman Marquez is one of the pitchers that gets hurt by Coors Field. So while we can play him when he's out of Coors Field, he's one of those that does get significantly worse at home. Uh, the Rockies have been very good lately. A lot of their starting pitching, uh, is not that doesn't really show any home road splits, but Marquez is someone that does. Uh, so we can look at some Orioles today. VR got that nice home run yesterday, 4,300, not bad at all. Uh, Dwight Smith Jr. is a good hitter. 4,600 is expensive. Uh, I don't want to play Alberto against a righty. Uh, Rio Ruiz is an extreme reverse splits guy, so I'd rather play him against a lefty. Uh, and Keon Broxton at 3,800 is very, very underpriced. He's shown uh, the power that he has if he can get a hold of one, even as bad as he was uh, with the Mets. You know, playing in Coors Field doesn't matter. If he could play in Coors Field every day, he might be an all-star. We've seen that from some really bad players in the past. Uh, so if I'm going to pick one Oriole to play, uh, given the price, it's probably going to be Broxton. If you're ignoring the price, it's going to be either Mancini, uh, Mancini or Smith uh, with VR as a close third uh, in terms of that race. Is that the Blue Jays lineup? Nope. That is a new White Sox lineup. The White Sox changed their lineup. Who is out? Ron Don is in now. So who was not in for Ron Don before? Did I already update that one? I did. So Tim Anderson is out. Oh, boy. Yeah. That's a boost to Odorizzi. Tim Anderson is out. And who's he, Ron Don, who's been as cold as you can be 
lately from my photographic memory. Uh, I'm not going to play him. So yeah, give me Odorizzi now. He gets a, a bigger boost. Uh, that ownership is not good. Uh, and while Rondon is a righty, so he does, he would take advantage of Odorizzi's reverse splits. Uh, he is significantly worse than Anderson. That is a significant decrease to the White Sox as a whole and increase uh, to Odorizzi as a pitcher. Uh, again, especially for 8,200. Wow, that is something else. So yeah, Marquez, uh, you can take advantage of him in cores. I think the Orioles, you know, I don't know why they only have a 4.2 run total. I would expect them to get over five runs today. I don't think it's going to be, you know, I don't think they're going to get 10 like the Rockies, but I, I don't expect them to be as bad as Vegas says. I think their ownership is going to be low because a lot of the times what you have in the tournaments that you guys are playing in is dudes that mathematically do this all and it's all automated. So they put in that Baltimore is going to get a 4.1 one run total and then it spits out whatever numbers are appropriate for that ignoring the fact that you know as humans we might think that certain players do better than that uh, average because that essentially is applying an average to all players or that the team might do better than 4.2 runs or 4.1 runs as the case may be uh, so i think that that's going to be the case with the orioles today and i'm a big fan of taking them uh, as well as the rockies though again Rockies and Twins are the two best. I want to fit them in 100%. Uh, I want to have a lineup that can, that I make today that is either Rockies or Twins-based. And you could do that on FanDuel as well. You just only have the Twins. You don't have the Rockies uh, to work with. I have eight texts. Ooh, I got a package from Amazon. Ooh, Cliff Bars. I got Cliff Bars because it's hard for me to walk and my heart's hard to cook. Um, yeah, I think that Herman and Oda Rizzi might be a good, a good play instead of Verlander Duffy, but I do like Verlander. I mean, one thing, James, and again, this is Roto Grinders, uh, projected ownership. And as I've said throughout the basketball season, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a good guess, but it's a guess, right? Like, no disrespect. I've talked to Chris Camino. Uh, you know, he knows what he's doing. It's, it's all based on math, and he works his ass off. So I'm not, I don't mean to disparage by any chance or, or by any means, uh, but all ownership projections are guesses, just like all point projections are guesses. You know, so while, you know, it says Odorizzi is 9% owned, he could be 15. Verlander, it says is 13. So let's look at these four guys for you, James, real quick, just, and maybe you can make a decision based on that, right? So you had Wheeler and Smith, 26 and 16, right? You had Verlander and Duffy. Verlander, 13%, Duffy, 4%. Huh, wow. Odorizzi, Mark, uh, oh, excuse me. Odorizzi, uh, I always do that. Hermen, I always do Hermen Marquez and Domingo Hermen because they always pitch on the same day. Excuse me, I'm going to burp. Odorizzi, 9%, Domingo Hermen, 6%. Both of those are great plays, honestly. I love both of them. I really do. Uh, I think that th th that White, so White Sox putting t taking Tim Anderson out and putting Ron Don in is really significant. Let me uh, just confirm the, the memory brain part of my memory brain. Uh, make sure that I am not wrong. Ron Don has a zero OPS with a zero WOBA and a weighted runs created plus of minus 100. Yep, like I said, as cold as it gets. Can't do worse than zero, except negative, and he has that in terms of everything else. Weighted runs created is minus one. Weighted runs against average, minus 1.3. Yeah, he is bad. Yeah, I'm telling you, bad. So that is from, so again, Tim Anderson, OPS 954 with a WOBA of 419 over the last week versus Jose Rondon, zeros and negatives. So yeah, big boost to Odorizzi there. But that's why, this is why I want to do this at this point. I want to be able to, to talk about the lineups that come out because it does matter. You know, those, the, those changes do make a difference. You can think a pitcher's good when you're looking at something the day before, and then they put out their AAA lineup, you know, because it's a Sunday morning. It's worth going over all of that because everything can change. Nice. 
You can fit Roark Duffy, the Colorado. Uh, you, you can fit Roark Duffy, Arenado, and Walters, and the Miami outfield. The one, two, three. Man, that's not. I mean, that's not bad at all. Especially if you can get some other Rockies or Twin Bats in to fill in those last three spots. That's not bad. That really is not bad at all. That really is not bad at all. I think that that lineup will certainly get you enough to cash. And it's going to be unique enough that I don't think there's going to be anybody that's going to be right there with you. You know, if you win this thing, you're going to win this thing. I don't think there's going to be a lot of, I mean, there's 30 people watching this video, give or take. Uh, but I don't think there's going to be a lot of people with a Roark Duffy Colorado Miami lineup. Uh, as much as there should be today, which is great. <laughs> well, you said before the season started, I would say that sentence. I would have laughed at you, but here we are. Baseball's a fun, fun sport. Hey, Blue Jays lineup. Finally, that's the last one for the slate. Okay, so we have Sogard, Guerrero, Smoke, Grichuk, Galvis, Guriel, Biggio, Drury, and Jansen. So Jansen, 2,300. Yeah, like I said, all of these bats are underpriced because of Robbie Erlin. They got to put out a different lineup because of Robbie Erlin. Uh, Vlad Guerrero, 3,800. Grichuk, who mashes lefties, 3,500. Uh, Lourdes Guriel, who I talked about, 3,300. Uh, and Danny Jansen at 2,300. You can get a, a four, three, four person stack from the Blue Jays. Uh, and uh, yeah, their, their run total just came up 0.5 uh, in the last few minutes with news of Erlin starting instead of Paddock. It is now a a one, two, three, uh, excuse me, a, a, a pick them with, <laughs> I've just read what you said it. It is now a pick them with the Padres. Uh, Biggio, a lefty on lefty batting seventh though. Mm, I'd rather have Guriel at second base with the righty and Guriel has been good lately. So again, let me go over that with you guys. Cause I did have all this blue Jay stuff up uh, when I looked at everything. Uh, so Guriel, uh, right now, over the last week, OPS of 1.667 with a WOBA of 659 and an ISO of 1,000. I know it's only six plate appearances in the last week, but that's not one plate appearance with an ISO of 1,000 and a WOBA of 659. That's that's pretty damn good for one week, you know? Uh, smoke, 1.007. Uh, OPS with a WOBA of 414. The one thing about Smoke is he's one of those switch hitters that's better as a lefty, and he's going to be hitting righty today. Uh, Rowdy Tellez isn't batting, so that doesn't matter. Uh, and then everybody under that is, you know, like an OPS of 770 uh, with a WOBA of about 330. So Galvis, Drury, Guerrero are all around there. Uh, Jansen's cold, but, you know, 230 WOBA, 150 ISO, 550 OPS for 2300 is going to be as, as good a value as you can get. So yeah, give me uh you know give me Guriel. Like him a lot. He's been on fire the last uh, few days since they called him back up, uh, which is basically what it's been. He got called up again a couple of days ago uh, when they brought up Biggio. They moved a few things around, and he's been on fire since then against the lefty where he's better. Give me him. Uh, I like Smoke, even though he's in a worse spot. I like Galvis. Don't love Drury. Like Drury. Love Vladdy Guerrero. Uh, dude can get two home runs today. Erwin really is not a good pitcher. So now we know that's the slate, guys. And ladies, that is the full slate. Um, if you would like, I can go on to the afternoon slate uh, or we can just pack it up here. It's up to y'all. I have no problem uh, doing either. Um, uh, I can, you know, I could do a quick, a quick look because it's only three games, right? And I did all the work for all this stuff anyway. Uh, so, oh, I don't mind. Yeah, I don't mind whatsoever. I don't mind whatsoever. Um, the hip hurts a lot. My leg is killing me. Uh, but I don't mind doing it at all. Uh, so on the on the late slate, uh, or on the night, excuse me, on the afternoon slate, whatever the hell you want to call it, on the afternoon slate, uh, we have six pitchers. So this is going to be a lot trickier, right? And none of them are really priced in a way that makes me super, super excited to play them, right? So we got Luke Weaver, 10-4, but rain, chance of rain. And it doesn't look good. Like we saw the other day, the California fields are not designed to hold rain, right? So let me double check what they have. I want to see what the hourly forecast is because there is a chance for rain all up California. Yeah, there's. it's going to rain pretty much throughout the Giants game and the Athletics game. So the one thing that I wanted to note, uh, and I was going to do so if I had written an article, 
uh, as much as I had forgotten to uh, that I was going to do that until just now. Um, there is a chance that these games both delay or rain out, right? And if they both rain out, you're probably, you know, that you're, you're screwed. If they get rained out before the games, before the slate locks, DraftKings will give you your money back. But if only one game goes off, that's it. That's all. You, you have to play people from that game. So this is going to be a question of uh, staying on top of the weather and making sure that everything looks okay. So as of right now, I would expect that both of these games are going to play through a light to medium rain uh, while risking the chance for a delay. Uh, you know, these are not East Coast fields, and I think it's important to realize that. You know, uh, what was it? Uh, Josh Engelman on Osimo, uh, I believe, said if the if the Angels Royals game gets postponed or rained out, uh, you know, a few games ago, that he would eat a hundred pizza rolls uh, because it had rained. You know, they had a really bad thunderstorm or a really heavy rain that came through, but it was hours before game time. But the field drains so poorly because they don't get rains like that there often enough, especially this time of year, that the field just became an unusable mess. Uh, so while I would expect them to uh, expect more rain in the uh, Oakland, San Francisco area, uh, I do think that there is a chance that the fields get puddled and they either have to stop it or call it or, or whatever. So again, I am going to uh, discuss this slate uh, Without the assumption, I'm going to assume that all these games are playing, right? It is going to be up to you to make that weather decision. Personally, I think there is significant risk in both games, but not enough that I would fade them completely. Uh, you, you mean, oh, ooh, Fisher, Patrick Fisher, catcher through third base. Oh, my. That is a great lineup then. Patrick Fisher. That is a great – McMahon isn't playing. McMahon isn't playing second base today. It's um, – oh, what's his name? Uh, Brendan Rogers. But he should be 200 cheaper. I think McMahon was 4,800, right? So you should be able to – you should still be able to get him in at second base. You get Walter Story, Arenado, Brendan Rogers, Daniel Murphy, and the 1-2-3 in the Marlins lineup with – yeah, with Roark and Duffy. That really is a good lineup. That is not a joke lineup. That's going to score a lot of runs today. That is not, man, that's really good. I hope I hope you run with that. I really do. And if you don't, I hope someone else does because I'd be really curious to see how that works out. Uh, so let me get back to the afternoon slate. I think that, again, this is one you have to acknowledge the risk. That being said, let's talk about it. We have six pitchers going today. Uh, looking at the recent form is going to be really important because, again, it, everything matters so much when it's like this. So we have Luke Weaver, who's probably been uh, in the best form lately. Well, obviously, even with Heaney, who hasn't started yet. Uh, <laughs> he's going to have a short leash, too, probably. Uh, so Weaver, nine strikeouts per nine, a 1.08 whip. Uh, his ERA and his FIP are 3.75 and 3.76, respectively. Uh, so I have no problem taking him. The one issue, again, 10.4 and then the rain risk. Uh, the one person that I really like here, uh, and I would have considered him for the main slate if this were on the main slate, is Sean Anderson. Uh, I don't love him, and the Diamondbacks hitters are about as hot as anything. Uh, but the weather, no matter what, even if, you know, if they play through the rain, that is going to be a boost to the pitchers, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, Rodgers is an over McMahon. Uh, so Sean and the, the Diamondbacks are only projected to get 3.6 runs. So we have Sean Anderson at 7,600, 7.2 strikeouts per nine, not fantastic. 2.7 walks per nine, not fantastic. 1.3 whip, not fantastic. But he has a 3.6 ERA, a 2.39 FIP, and a 3.73 XFIP, which, you know, if he was 9,000, I wouldn't be super interested in. But for 7,600 on a small slate, I don't know how you don't take that. The Diamondbacks bats are going to be uh, much worse off uh, than they were over the last couple of games, as hot as they have been. And I think that is very important to, to realize. Uh, you know, it is a small slate, and there's some bad pitchers here, and there's some pitchers that are pitching for their first time this season that are not going to have the run that you would like them to have. You, you know what I mean? So 
you know, three games is going to make it a lot harder. Uh, I'm going to check right now to see if Heaney has any sort of pitch count. Yeah, his last start, he only made it 4.1 innings. So while I like Heaney today, uh, I don't think he's going to make it much more than five or six innings. Uh, John Ting asks, who are we playing for catcher besides Walters? Uh, if we are not playing Walters, or I am anyway, I am punting. So Maldonado or Jensen, 2,200 or 2,300 are going to be my favorite. Other catchers besides Walters. Uh, if you're going to pay up for another catcher, it's going to be Wilson Ramos because he is on fire recently. And Wilson Ramos is one of those streaky hitters where he's streaky. You play him when he's hot and then get off him when he's cold. And right now he's hot, so you ride that. Uh, but I'd still rather have Walters or punt it down and then spend that money uh, somewhere else because that $2,000 savings from Ramos down to like a Maldonado or a Jansen is significant. Uh, it really is. But again, I think Walters is going to have the highest upside. Back to the afternoon slate. Uh, so Heaney is not going to have enough run, right? Weaver's a good spot. 10 fours is a little much. Sean Anderson, 7,600, I really do like. Uh, the one question I have is, you know, how much how much of a leash is Ariel Horado going to have? Uh, because I have not seen who's coming in after him, right? And he's an opener. Excuse me. So I have no idea how you're going to play any of the Rangers pitchers, excuse me, because again, I have not seen any news and I've been looking who is going to come in after Harado. And if they let him just run two or three innings, then you really can't play him. And then it just devolves into a bullpen game anyway. Right. So it's not, it's not something that I absolutely love. Uh, let's see the Texas Rangers lineup just came out. Um, so we have Chu, Andrus, Pence, Gallo, Forsyth, Odor, Driggy Cabrera, Danny Santana, and then Kiner Falifa. Uh, and this is a good lineup against lefties. So again, while I like Heaney a lot, uh, if he were stretched out, Heaney would be someone I would be all over today at this price. I just don't think he's going to get the run uh, he needs to get. He's just not, you know, it's like uh, it's like Maeda. Like, I'd love to pitch him today, but over 9,000 when you might get 85 pitches, you know, I'd rather just spend up a little bit or go down a little bit. You know what I mean? Uh, next up we have, uh, so I wouldn't mind taking Rangers bats here. I think that if you're trying to be safe, Angels and the Rangers bats are both fine options. Uh, I have no problem taking either of them. Obviously against Ariel Harado and a Rangers bullpen game uh, with the wind blowing out 10 miles an hour, I have no problem whatsoever uh, taking some Angels bats. Just know that there's a, a risk that there's some rain through the game here too, uh, which would be a boost to pitchers and a downgrade to batters. But honestly, that's all three games. All the California games are facing the same weather pattern. So again, that being said, uh, let's go back to it. So we have Weaver, who's been in decent form. Anderson, who's been in good form. Uh, you have Harado, who's an opener essentially. So we really can't consider him. Heaney, who's getting his first start and is not stretched out enough. So we really can't consider him. And then the last game, we have Leak versus Anderson. And again, this is going to be tough because they're both terrible and have been in awful form lately. Uh, Mike Leak, 7.7 .7 strikeouts per nine, 1 1.5 walks per nine, 1.54 whip with a 6.17 ERA, but a 5.23 FIP. Uh, that's backed up, you know, his XFIP is only 369, which is better, but he's still not very good. The wind's going to be blowing out at 16 miles an hour. And this is Oakland, not San Francisco, where the park is built to minimize wind impact. So that's going to be significant and a boost to the bats. And Mike Leake is just not a great pitcher. Uh, and then Brett Anderson is, I don't know why he's in the major leagues. Um, because he's a lefty, I guess, and that's how it works. 4.7 strikeouts per nine, so you can't play him anyway, uh, even at 7,000. He's not walking people, uh, and he's getting lucky with his batting average at balls in play, and you can see that because his ERA is 3.97, and his FIP is 5.74, which is a significant gap. And this is a, a Mariners team that... I think gets underrated at, 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 you know, they, they went on that win streak at the beginning of the year and then they bombed, but that's a function, a lot of, you know, of pitching and defense, uh, not necessarily that the hitting has been bad. You know, I think that they are decent against left-handed bats. Uh, I think Vogelback goes under owned uh, against lefties, even though he's been able to mash whoever this year. 
Uh, you know, I'm not going to play Seeger against a lefty, but Murphy, you know, catching at 3,400 is going to be a cheaper, decent uh, punt if you want. But yeah, this is a tough slate and I'm not going to hide it. The rain and, and the lack of pitching makes things really, really tough. Um, I think that what I would rather, you know, all things being equal, ignoring the risk of rain and everything else, uh, I would rather play Weaver and Anderson together. Uh, same lineup. I think those two are going to have the best scores. The teams have the lowest run total. Uh, I just think that th those are the best two. Uh, Anderson is cheap enough that you're going to be able to get some savings uh, and put it into bats. And then I think that the it's a tough one because I think the Angels are the best the best placed team uh, in terms of you know the way the way it's going to work against Harado. But at the same time. Man, that 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 wind in Oakland with those two terrible pitchers that give up a ton of home runs. Leak gives up 2.3 home runs per nine. Anderson 2.4 home runs per nine. You know, just sign me up for that. Uh, by the way, I didn't point this out before. David Hess for the Orioles gives up 5.7 home runs per nine, which is double the next worst player on the slate. Excuse me, more than double the second worst player on the slate. And he's the one in Colorado. So again, Rockies bats today. Uh, I use several different stats. I use FanDuel and I use baseball reference. Uh, but it depends on what I'm looking for. Uh, I use, I have this one page I set up on FanDuel that lets me, excuse me, on FanGraphs, FanDuel, on FanGraphs that lets me get the WOBA and everything else uh, for pitchers and for batters. Uh, but baseball reference I like a lot as well. It really depends on what I'm looking at specifically, because uh, they both have some some different things uh, that that are that are more beneficial. Uh, so, last thing I'm going to talk about is this uh, the showdown. We'll talk uh, the Braves and the Cardinals. I recommended playing Tehran against the uh, Cardinals the other day because the Cardinals played a stupid, stupid lineup against him where they let a lefty bat first and then uh, the lefties bat seven, eight, and then righties all in the middle. And if you know anything about Tehran, it's that he's very good against righties and horrible against lefties. Uh, if the Cardinals play the lineup they played yesterday with Fowler leading off and Carpenter batting third, uh, it's going to be a lot harder for Tehran to pitch in and around those lefties like he would have when there were five righties in a row. Uh, so this is going to come down to uh, what the Cardinals lineup is. Uh, if the Cardinals play their normal lineup, uh, if you look at Cardinals lineups, the Cardinals lineup for 95% of the year was Carpenter, Goldschmidt, DeYoung, Ozuna, Martinez, Molina, uh, Fowler, Wong. Uh, every once in a while, they had Bader batting eighth and moved everybody up instead of Jose Martinez uh, in the five hole. But it's basically been that lineup until yesterday when they moved Fowler to the leadoff spot and Carpenter down to five. Uh, again, with how weak Tehran is, uh, if they go back to the original lineup, I'm going to play Tehran today. If they play this lineup, I'm going to take the three Cardinals lefties bats and then uh, take a couple other uh, Cardinals and maybe one uh, Brave. The one per the one thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to take Flaherty. Uh, Flaherty is overrated and he's going to go over owned on this. He doesn't have as much strikeout upside as you would like. Uh, the numbers that he gets uh, are not as good as the underlying numbers, which means he is getting lucky. And this is a Braves team that doesn't strike out, which decreases his upside as it is. Uh, the Braves are one of those teams that's not afraid to play small ball. I've talked about like the Royals, like the Mets to a degree earlier in the year. Uh, but the Braves don't mind spring hits around and getting whatever hits they can. Uh, so I have no problem uh, taking some bats against Flaherty and taking lefties against Tehran. Uh, the question is, do you play Tehran in this showdown? And that's going to come down to a function of where the lefties are in the Cardinals lineup. So uh, let's break it down a little uh, more specifically for you before I take my leave, because if you're looking at a showdown, uh, it really does benefit you to look at the last seven days uh, of stats. And I'm here to do that for you. So 
Again, you are hot if you are, uh, for me, if OPS is over 1,000 and Woba is over 400. Right now, Dansby Swanson uh, and Freddie Freeman both qualify for that. Swanson, 1.097 OPS with a 455 Woba. Freeman, 1.049 with a 436 Woba. Uh, so both of them, uh, I would absolutely love playing, especially Freeman. Uh, like I said, I'm going to, assuming they all play, Fowler, Carpenter, Wong, uh, for the Cardinals, uh, and then Freeman and Swanson look like two of the bats that I absolutely love to take for the Braves. Acuna and Riley are also absolutely hot, and they're the only other two that I would really consider playing. Uh, Acuna, 890 OPS with a 369 Woba. Uh, Riley, 877 OPS with a 361 Woba, and he's shown that he can hit against righties and lefties, uh, that rookie. So, you know, while the, the league's probably going to adjust to him a lot sooner than we'd like, uh, and he's going to wind up striking out a bunch, as all rookies do, that come up hot. Uh, those are five plays on the Braves that I would take uh, Swanson and Freeman uh, specifically uh, more so. And then let's look at the Cardinals because again, Wong has not been hot lately, but you have to play any lefties you can against Tehran. Uh, so specifically Carpenter uh, over the last week, 1.300. OPS with an ISO of 400 and a WOBA of 529. And then Fowler, 1.088 OPS with an ISO of 438 and a WOBA of 444. So one of those two is going to be my captain tonight. Uh, period. I like Freddie Freeman a lot, but especially if Fowler leads off, he's going to be my captain tonight, and that's how I'm going to play it. Um, I will also point out that if Bader plays, he's been hot lately, uh, 1.159 OPS with a WOBA of 478. Um, if Weeders plays for some reason uh, instead of Molina, Weeders is a switch hitter, uh, which is fantastic because that means he's batting lefty against Tehran. Uh, granted, he's only had four plate appearances, but that's an, in those four, uh, an OPS of a thousand with a woba of 437, not bad. Uh, Ozuna 964 OPS with a woba of 400. Again, he's one of those guys that's better against lefties. But if you're going to play multiple Cardinals bats and the lefties run out, uh, Ozuna is going to be the one that I look at. Uh, I do want to point out again, Wong has a 467 OPS with a 190 woba over the last week, so he is cold as anything. Still, lefties against Tehran get such a significant boost that I would still take a chance on him. I think most other people will as well. So if you want to uh, go against what GPP people are going to do, I would do that. But I think not playing a pitcher in this game is going to separate you uh, more than enough from the field. Okay. I think that's everything. No more questions for anybody. Uh, thank you all for joining me. I really do appreciate it. I went an hour and 41 today. This is my longest video ever. Uh, and now I have to set my lineup up and I didn't even get to finish all the lineups and my stats guy is driving home eight hours today and I had to do the projections and I have to do that as fast as I can. So I'm going to try to get to work. I'm tired. Okay. Love you all. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Um, have a wonderful day. Best of luck to you all. And, uh, you know, I'll see you at the top of the leaderboards with those Rocky stacks.